Welcome to the Make Code Arcade live stream. I'm Shannon. I'm at Chacau on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Daryl at Darzu on the Make Code Forum. I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Vivian at Live True Forum on the Make Code Forum. Cool. Um, so this is Ocean Week, I think. Um, and yeah, that's because it's like, it's like Shark Week, but everything. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Shark Week, but you just everything around the shark as well. Um, but yeah, it's because we're running a game jam that is ocean themed. So if you go to arcade.makeout.com slash game jam, you will find out more information um, and you too can make an ocean themed game. Um, OK, yeah, <laughs> even Richard. <laughs> um, all right, so I had an idea just now while I was getting water um, and you guys can tell me what you think of it. Um, so the idea is we, um, it's like a deep sea game. So all the way to the bottom of the ocean. Um, and you know, they have those like thermal vent things, um, yeah. that are like full of nutrients. And so all the weird deep sea creatures gather around them. Um, so I was like, it'd be cool to do a game set around a deep sea vent. Um, and the like vague game idea I had was that you could be like, I don't know, planting a, a garden or something. You could like, you put down like a like a seed or an egg or a cell. Um, and then after some time it like turns into a thing and what it turns into is influenced by like how close you are to the vent and like uh, the elevation of it. And I don't know, other factors. <laughs> um, are we gonna have a fish gardener with like a, a sun hat? Yeah. <laughs> I love oh. this. OK, that was a great idea. Cool. So um, so I'm going to start by drawing a, a vent, I guess. Um, I don't really know. It looks like a volcano, right? Kind of. Yeah, I think it's like a tube. Oh, it's like a tube? Yeah, I think so. Like that? Um. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking of things that live by the so, vents, and not the vents yeah, themselves. Yeah, there's those red tube guys that live right next to the vents. But I think the vents themselves are just like holes and rocks. I think. Okay, it's like this, right? Or yeah. oh wait, no, I think Richard's actually right. I think it is more of a tube because there's this calcium or like some sort of mineral buildup that happens. It's like a oh, um, like it, it builds itself upwards as it yeah like yeah goes. exactly over time. And since these things are really old, they're actually kind of tall. But we could, you know, use the internet to figure this out too. Yeah, I'm looking it up now. Yeah, that is. They look kind of like stalactites coming out of the ground. Slag mites. Slag mites coming yes. out of the ground. Mm, mm. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna go with this for now, just in the interest of like time. Yes, this is like a stalag, like a really short one. Mm -hmm. There's a hole at the top, right? That's correct. Yeah. Cool. Um, Vivian, you should probably just start animating some seaweed now. <laughs> I think everybody needs to animate seaweed, and we see <laughs> who's so this. It, Richard, <laughs> I hate it. It's so hard. Have you tried? That's a vent. Um, all right, and then... What I'm going to do is I'm going to have bubbles coming up from it, and I'm going to have a player character that is a fish gardener, per Richard, walking around. And then I think when you press a button, you're going to put down like like a seed, I guess. Um, I don't I don't know. Things don't really grow down there, but it's fine. Yeah, well, um, have we been to the bottom sure, of the ocean? Sure, things grow. Like plants? Can you have plants? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's this whole... Non, it's like a whole biome of creatures that live where they get energy and minerals from these like mm. vents instead of the sun. Uh -huh. They're like a alternative to the sun. Okay. I think. I knew, I knew there were like animals or like weird like microbial like critters, um, but I don't actually know. So you could. I thought people. there were plants. I mean, I don't think there are plants because plants need light. Well, but I thought there was a whole. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm just spreading misinformation. But <laughs> I think we should clarify I thought there were. that this game is not going to be scientifically accurate. I I don't know anything, so. I mean, this is our tradition, you know, as a live stream. <laughs> yeah. 
But like the whole deal with plants is they're like, you know, eating that sun, chloroplast in it into photosynthesis. Yes, except for these ones. I thought these were the only exception to that rule. Hmm. Perhaps. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm making a little sprite that's going to cover the like mouth of it, and then I'm just going to start um, the bubble effect from it. Where are we at? Bubbles. Forever. Ah, oh, perfect. Um, and then I'm going to set the sprite to ghost and invisible so that you can't see. So I made it pink so that I could see where I was like putting it on the screen, um, but you don't need to see because really the only reason this sprite is here is to make these bubbles. Um, so now I refresh um, and our vents got bubbles. Um, so then I'm going to do a player character. Vivian, do you want to draw me a player character? Okay. <laughs> Anything except seaweed, I'm happy to do. <laughs> um, this is great. Vivian is so much better at drawing characters than I am. I'm going to do like a stand-in. You're both very good at it, but better than the rest of us by far, I think. Well, Daryl's up there. 16 by 16? Or yes, 16 okay. by 16. Um, okay, so this, this fish is going to be um, replaced by whatever Vivian comes up with for our gardener. And then um, I'm going to move with buttons. Gardener. All right. Um, so then... Um, I don't know. Eventually, Richard and Daryl, um, or just Richard if Daryl is busy. Um, the uh, I'll need like plants or like weird underground things that seeds could grow into. Um, but we're not there yet, so also feel free to just hang out. Um. I'm gonna start drawing a sea anemone. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this gardener stay in screen. Um, there's no gravity because we're underwater. Um, and Checks there's out. gravity if you're in the ocean. Um, well, if you're underwater, you can like swim up. So maybe I should do like a little bit of gravity that is like slowly pulling them down. Um, but you can disregard it if you use your buttons. <laughs> Let's try this out and see how it looks. Set gardener. So a y nope. Acceleration in the up and down direction, um, and then um, y zero is the top of the screen. So I'm gonna do like a five. That's too slow. this adds anything. How big should this sea anemone be? Uh, 16 by 16 if possible. Okay. Yeah. And I'm gonna do various. It's gonna start out small and get big. Oh, okay. Um, maybe, so there's gonna be a zero stage that is the same for everything. Um, so that you can't okay. tell exactly what you have. And then like, um, yeah, however many you want after it, no more than five. <laughs> Um, cool. All right, so here we have our guy. We can move him around. Um, we have our vent. And I'm going to do on a button pressed, you're going to just like make a seed. Um, and as you kind seed variable. All right, and this is just going to be like a very small, um, let's see, our background is dark purple, so five by hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to put this like on the ground near where the um, the the player is. I haven't really figured out how I'm going to do like metrics. 
for so I think we can do distance to this vent because I also have this bubble source that marks where the vent is um, and then we could do like some kind of you know elevation is the y position um, and then maybe I'll try and like put some like randomized water currents or something um, in the thing and then if it's overlapping a current that's like another factor um, you could do like predators maybe predators yeah. Or no, oh, sorry, these no. are just things that influence what plant you get. Um, oh, I see. Gotcha. Yeah. So the idea is you don't really know what the um, factors are, but like as you're planting things, you can. Um, that, yeah. um, and it'll be like slightly randomized to make it exciting. Um, cool. So I'm going to put this seed where my player is. Mystery seed, and I'm going to set it to the garden X and the gardener Y plus something. Um, and the gardener is 16 pixels tall, so I'm just going to do plus. Oh, right, the gardener Y is the middle. Um, so actually, instead of just using gardener Y, I could just use the bottom. And I think I don't want it to be. So I'm going to add a little bit of X to just offset if to like. Let's see this. So that should make it show up in like the bottom. Um, cool. These are even a little big, I think. Yeah. Um, and then, hmm, I don't know. We can introduce some mechanics later. For now, you have infinite seeds. That's fine. Um, and then the other thing is right now you can also plant seeds up here, um, is fine. We'll deal with that at a later point in time. Um, cool. So then on game update, um, or, hmm, I think I can set the seeds lifespan. That way each one has so an on game update. Um, so the thing I was thinking is you need some like um, check to like grow the seed. So I could do it in an on game update, which is every like one second we could go over all the seeds and just like advance them up a stage. Um, but that means they would all grow at the same time, regardless of when you're planting them. So the other thing I could do is on this mystery seed, I could set its lifespan to be however long um, the seed, you know, lives before it like evolves and then when that sprite destroys itself I'll just make another one in the same place that is the next level up. Um, so I drag out this uh, mystery seed set x uh, but instead of x I'm setting the lifespan and we're just gonna start with like a seconds. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> So you can see it's it's destroying itself um, when it reaches the end of its lifespan. So then if I grab out this on destroyed sprite of kind seed. So in here, I'm then going to calculate um, the the type of plant. Um, and I think I think I'm going to have some categories. Um, hmm. Yeah, and I think it's just going to be images. Let's start. OK, let's start with one for each. Um, so I'm going to do an if statement. And for now, I'm just going to do distance to the vent. Um, so I'm going to add an extension, which is J1 Doral Arcade Sprite Util. This is the one with the distance. Yeah, I think so. Cool. So this is written by Joey, who is not here, but we missed dearly. Um, he's fine. He's running errands. Um, 
and um, it just adds a bunch of useful things to the um, sprite category. Uh, one of which is hopefully, yes, distance between two sprites. So, mm -hmm. so the distance between the seed and the bubble source is how far away you are. Um, and this is in pixels. So I'm going to say if you're, I'm just going to do like um, some stages. So uh, and then I can right click, do this get distance thing. Um, if you're less than 20, then this one will be 40. And anything bigger than that will be something else. Um, I don't know. I think maybe, okay. Do you guys have ideas for how best to structure this thing that will potentially be like a combination of factors? <laughs> um, so the way I'm doing it now, it will end up being just a bunch of big nested if statements. But it's like, um, it's like I'm dividing the screen into zones. Um, and based on what zone you're in, it will be a different kind of plant. But the zones are like height and, or like, it'll be like radially out from this source. Um, but also, so, so one, way, one way you could do that is with yeah. images, right? That's true. Yeah. Or the, the that sounds best. cool. I think it'd be kind of neat if it wasn't absolute. You know, it's like if you're in the zone, then that mm -hmm. adds to some percent to go in one direction. Yeah. Um. So that so that you don't like if you just drop seeds everywhere, you don't end up. You know, with just uh, hard lot divisions. You know? Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Maybe definitely. that's where you were going already. Um. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, I think we can still do that with the images. Um, because mm -hmm. we can have overlap between images. Right. Maybe. Yeah, you, yeah. you'll have to make them a sprite, but yeah. <laughs> okay. You you could have each one that overlaps. Um, like be added to a pool of like factors and then you pick randomly from that like pool. I don't know if that, I don't know. I think that would require it, me to do something at the end of the overlaps check though, which might be weird or like at the end of all overlaps. Oh, mm -hmm. or you would have maybe need to write your own custom yeah. like, run once overlaps code. Um, okay, let me try this for now. Um, I might just make them squares so that I can do this programmatically. Okay, um, I'm going to grab this index one just because it seems like it might be useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a series of squares around our bubble source and they're going to be like increasing in size. Um, and depending on which one you're overlapping, some stuff will happen. Yes, that works. Um, all right. So this is going to be sprite of kind zone. Variable. Um, And then, um, so I want them to be like bigger and bigger. So I'm going to start with um, create an image. And I'm going to do some math, but like very Ooh. straightforward math. I mm -hmm. have a, uh, an idea for the zone. So now that they're going to be sprite images, you could even have them move. So I'm imagining like a certain fish can come in and swim across and it carries a zone with it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you're Sorry. like, I really want to plant like some of these things here. And so you wait for that fish to come by and then you're like, click, click, click. And then, you know, so you can sort of, uh, that mm -hmm. could be a bit of a gameplay element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even these like bubble zones could like shift a little bit as they're moving. So it's not like an absolute boundary. Um, all right. So um, I made the um, sprite image and then I'm going to, for now, I'm just going to fill it with a color. Um, so that we can see where we are at. So, 
zone sprite image with pink. Um, and then this is going to show up in the middle of the screen. Yep. Actually, let me just do this. And then I'm going to put it um, over the bubble source position. So that's right. Position two. Um, bubble source X and bubble source Y. Um, and then I'm also going to set it's. Hmm. Z index um, to so I want the the biggest one to have the lowest Z index. So um, I'm just gonna do this for now. I know there's gonna be four of them, so um, this should probably be in a variable as we change things. But yeah, cool um, zones. So. Hmm. How do I make this look the way I want it to? Times squared? Right, let's try this. Ooh. Ooh. All right, I think that is about right. Um, so like I don't I don't like know what these numbers add up to. I'm just sort of messing with them until I get a thing I want. Um, cool. And, and this can be ten. Yeah, all right. So that like fills up the screen. You get, you know, something in the very middle um, and then sort of spreading out from there. You get these different uh, zones and then I'm going to actually delete this color because I don't want it. Um, oh, no, I do want the color because they need to be they need, we need to be able to collide with them. So instead I'm going to set them to invisible. Zone sprite invisible to be true. OK. So. Cool. Back where we were before. Um, OK, so then. Hmm. OK, OK, so I'm using this on destroyed. Um, I think I should save on each zone sprite the like number of the zone that it is and then when the seed is destroyed, I'm going to go through um, and I'm going to do basically the thing Daryl said. I'm going to collect all the zones um, and the smallest zone will have the highest priority. Um, so I'm going to wait that one more um, and then we're just going to pick. Um, and so for now, it's just going to be you saw we had like five zones. So based on which like zone you are right now, strictly that will um, determine what uh, what kind of plant you grow into. Um, so I'm going to go into extensions and add still Vivian's favorite extension. Yes, 100%. <laughs> Arcade Sprite data. Um, and this adds, I'm sure you guys have seen us use it on stream a bunch, but it adds a bunch of blocks to the bottom of this sprites drawer, which allow you to save extra info onto the sprites. So the info I am going to save is a number. And that number is zone. And I think I'm going to save this um, five minus index. So this is like um, I basically like flipped the the zone number so that the smallest one is um, like the biggest number. So the smallest one is five and then four, three, two, one. That way I can just do sort of like a, the greatest number is like the most important thing. Um, 
it doesn't really matter in code you can always like you know flip around your greater than less than sense but i think this will be easier to like think about cool so then um i'm going to make an array um in variable zones and it starts out empty um and then i'm going to go over every zone sprite in the scene so it's in arrays sprite of kind zone and then i'm going to do an if check to see um so actually i don't need this distance at all because we're using these sprites so if um that overlaps check is here if this seed, the seed that is destroyed, overlaps with value, which is the zone, then we're going to add the number of this zone to this empty array. Um, so add value, and then um, we're going to get this is zones, and this is the Zone value to the end. Um, cool. So, okay. So now we have all of the zones. Um, and then I need to do some kind of picking thing to grab. Um, what if I just did? This is this is kind of dumb. Um, but. just added it to the array that many times. Um, that's not dumb, that's genius. <laughs> uh, so the bigger the number is, the more times it's in your array. Um, so sure. And then um, I'm going to pick a random one. So make a variable. Selected zone. Wow, we just like very quickly ballooned to this variable list. <laughs> um, and it is going to be the zones that we have get value at a random number between zero and the length, the number of zones we have, minus one. Cool, so we've picked a zone. All right, perfect. So now we have our if statement that is um, depending on the zone you are. And so the zones we have are, um, Sorry, let me just look real quick. I don't really think anyone's going to hit this middle one. It's um, so tiny, but one, two, three, four. Um, or five, four, three, two, two, one, zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. I feel like these numbers are probably like slightly off at the edges. So I'm just going to start with one. Um, no, I should start with four. If four equals one, that's not anything. <laughs> if selected zone equals four. Okay. So I think we have three zones that are going to be like important. Um, so it's four, three, two. I'm going to um, in this sprites in the seeds place. I'm going to make a new one that is like a plant. Um, so new variable. Mm. Of kind. Okay. So okay. So I see there are. Oh wow. Okay. Cool. So. Vivian has a gardener. Okay. Um, so goodbye, fishy. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Fish, which is the only thing I know about the deep ocean. So beautiful. The hat. <laughs> <laughs> what is it blocking from? We don't know. <laughs> Radiation. Um. <laughs> Yeah, they're more um, Okay, cool. And then Richard has um, anemone one. 
anemone. Actually, what I want to do is I want to make the seeds also 16 by 16. Um, I think that will make my life easier for <laughs> positioning. So it's just going to be like a seed here. Yeah, that looks about right. Um, so then instead of all of this weird positioning stuff, I'm just going to set it directly to the gardener's X and Y, and it'll just be like, I guess I could do it like this in the center because that's where the anemone is. Perfect. Planting. Um, so then I can just directly um, do it in the same position and it'll look like, you know, the thing grew from where the seed is. Everything will be overlapping correctly. Um, so I make a new plant and um, I set its position. New plant position to the same position as the sprite that was just destroyed. Do we need more varieties? Yeah. Right. Yes, I that would be great <laughs> if you guys wanted that. to do different plants. Um, but for now, I'm just going to copy this one into all of these. So then for all my cases, I'm going to do the same plant. Um, but I'm going to change the color so that I know it's like hitting a different one. Um, oh, shoot, I do need to do, okay, I need to change this. Let me, I'm turning invisible off so I can make sure these numbers are right. So I think there's actually like a bigger zone that is completely off screen because this is going five times. So if I do, oh no, what, what's zero then? Oh geez, there's an invisible zero zone because it's an image of width zero and zero. That's fine. So it's zero one. Did a bad thing with these numbers. Um, okay. One, two, three, four. So this outermost one should be Five minus one, it should be one. So I think what we want is three, two, and one for zones. Um, I'm gonna make these invisible again. And then uh, I'm gonna make these just like, here's fake plant one, here's fake plant two. All right, so I'm gonna plant a bunch of seeds and I think we should be getting different. Um, oh yeah, boom, okay, cool. Uh, oh, oh, and there's a real one. Perfect. Great. Um, does Sprite data do arrays? <laughs> it does not. Hmm. So, okay. So I need some way to specify what the next thing this plant should evolve into is. Um, and the thing I was thinking initially is I could just put images on this sprite and it could like swap out its own image after some time. Um, but it doesn't look like I can store like an array of images. So the other thing I could do is I could put a name on the sprite and that name could be an image array that I define up here. Um, and we could just grab from that. Yeah, can that's the easiest way to do it. I don't think I can convert from a string to a variable, though. It'll have to be a number. No, um, you'll just have to write an if statement. Or yeah, you could do an array of arrays, but that's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK, yeah, I'm going to do a function that is um, get next image, get, get and evolution, um, and it'll take in a string that is the name and a number that is the stage, current stage. All right, 
and then if the name is anemone. Um, Whoa, is that how you spell anemone? Is it? I, I have so. no idea. I'm pretty sure that's not remember seeing it written down. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, Daryl, if you want to draw deep sea plants, um, but you also don't uh, have plants if you do not want to. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I will work on that. Richard, is this thing I'm doing bad? Um, if I put this list directly in the return statement. That's fine. OK, cool, perfect. Um, OK, so I'm not really doing any checks. I'm just kind of going to rely on. Um, well, we'll put in checks after. Um, but right now, uh, you pass in the name of the plant, you pass in the stage you're currently at, and then we'll give you the image of the next stage. So let's do, this is baby anemone. And then we have two. And stage three. I love how weird and alien these guys look. Um, so then instead of specifying the image here, I'm going to um, call my function get plant evolution. And so zone three is anemone zone. Any and um, current stage is negative one. And I can move this one out, actually, because we want to set it to the same position regardless. OK, let's see if this function works. And then um, I'm going to do the lifespan thing again. Um, oh, and then I guess the other thing I need to do is I'm going to save the stage onto this plant. Um, so once again, using sprite data. Um, so we just made a plant, so we know that this is always going to be a stage zero. Stage two, number zero. OK, so I'm going to do the same thing again. Um, before, we were setting a lifespan on the seed, and then when the seed was destroyed, we did some stuff. So now we're going to set a lifespan on the plant. New plant lifespan um, to you know, some. Um, this number can also change. We're probably not going to get to it, but you could have different growth levels for different types of plant. Um, then when a plant is destroyed, plant, um, it's just going to call, uh, it's going to remake itself. Well, we'll just make a new plant. Um, I should probably function. Um, and get the next stage of the plant. Uh, so I need to save the name of the plant onto it as well. So this is going to be string. Set new plant name. OK. So then when the plants, you know, this stage's life cycle ends, um, I'm going to go in, grab the name of it, data name, 
and also this stage, which is a number. Mm -hmm. um, and this will just get the next image and we'll make a thing. Um, OK, so we don't really have. So OK, so if we watch this. Boom. Oh, it's interesting that it doesn't actually break. Cool, good for us. Um, so I need some way to know that I'm at like the end. Um, and then I want it to like stay if it's at the end. I don't want it to have a lifespan. <laughs> um. So, hmm, how do I want to do this? If Well, OK, so here's what here's my pitch. You guys tell me if this is bad. Um, I'm putting an empty image at the end of this array. So if I get the next stage and it's an empty image, then I will not set the lifespan um, and it will just live forever at that stage. Oh. Um, this is, um, I don't know, it, it gets the job done. Um, <laughs> So. Why would that be a bad idea? I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it gets the idea. job done. <laughs> okay, so new plant image, and then if. So if the new image is not uh, an empty image, so I'm going to do an if statement. You could also check, is it different than the current image? But then I would have to, um, oh, OK, yeah, I could do, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, OK, let's do that then. So instead of doing this array thing, I'll move the array out and we'll if you try and get something that's past the end of the array, we'll always return the last element of the array. Um, so that if you put in like bigger numbers, you're always getting the last one. Um, and then we can check if the images are different. Um, then you don't even have to do anything. You could just keep killing itself and regenerating. <laughs> that seems bad, though. <laughs> Um, okay. This does mean we have to do a variable for each uh, type of plant, but we're only going to have like four or five, so I think it's no big deal. Um, and I'm going to do the minimum of the current stage plus one and the length of anemone images minus one. Length of array anemone images. Cool, OK, so this will always return the last one. And um, then we're going to check if uh, not image equals, perfect. Um, so new plant image is equal to the image of the sprite we are. Image, my sprite image. So if it's a different image, we, uh, I dragged it out of the mat, uh, we make an evolution. Otherwise, um, we make, or okay, let's do this. Always make a sprite, and if it's not equal, then we set a lifespan so that it will eventually um, die out. Otherwise, 
the next time we set it. Oh, what did I do here? Great, get me my image. Perfect. OK, let's try this out real quick. So um, just to kind of go over the thing we did, um, I added this like minimum check. So if you ask for um, 0, 1, 2, and if you ask for 3, it'll just keep returning this last element. So we're going to make a sprite that is this last image. It's going to hit the lifespan. It's going to destroy itself, and it's going to try and grab a new image, but that image will be the same. So then we won't set a lifespan, and that one will live forever. No, they are definitely still dying. Hmm. Oh, I'm not updating the stage at all. Wait. I'm not setting any data on this new plant thing. I don't know why this is working. Um, <laughs> let's let's update those fields. Um. Oh, it's. Yeah. Makes sense. I, yeah. Um, so I need to set the name on the new plant that we made. And then I also need to set the stage to the number plus one. Stage plus one. So now it's on the next stage. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So before we were never even hitting the next stage, it was just like a weird oh it's the z index shift as it like grows up that's fine um cool okay let me put in some more plants um okay so what have we got i did a plant that i find it's not a plant but i find it extremely <laughs> upsetting and so i challenged myself to draw it <laughs> How did you find it? Did you just feel like weird plants? No, I think this is the animal that most people associate with deep sea vents. All right. Too warm. English. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no. I think we. Hmm? I think Richard and I both did tube worms. I didn't notice they oh. did it as well. Stage one. This is two. Are they like red on top in real life? Yep. Right. Yeah. Stage three. <laughs> cool. Images. Okay. And this one. Two plant images. Cool. All right. So, noob worm. Um, great. And then Daryl's, which is a different variety of two. This would be great if we had implemented the code for doing that variety. Um, but that's cool. Oh, <laughs> uh, we can say that different tube worms grow at like different distances from the thermal vent. I'll do a random check when I'm first setting um, what kind of tube worm you are, and it'll be one of these two kinds. I think that will work. Um, okay, 
I don't even really need to rename this array, right? Because we're setting it right before. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I guess I could set the array and do the return outside, technically. Uh, we're, we're just going to leave this as it is for now, though. Um, for expediency. All right. And lastly, Vivian. <laughs> I didn't know we were doing things based on real life. I thought we had thrown science out the window. So mine's not based on anything. <laughs> no, I appreciate the variety. <laughs> um, and I think our customers will too. <laughs> this is stage one. Stage two. Oh man. This totally looks like it could be a real thing, though. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been to the deep sea. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I have, but it's been a while. I haven't checked up recently. <laughs> Would you okay. see something like this? It's named a water cactus, and it is a Vivian creation. Uh, I'm just going to leave this variable name the same. It's fine. Okay, cool. So we have two born, two born, two water cactus, and we have to introduce them here. So I think um, what I'm going to do is um, this, and then here um, I'm going to do a random check. So um, make another variable. Okay, and um, use a 50% chance. And there'll be one type of tube worm or the other type of tube worm. Nope, I didn't like that because those are not strings. Right, cool. And great. So I think, let me un overlaps all of this code. Oof. Uh, there's another creature, but I don't know. Oh. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, we'll put the creature in. I don't think we have code to, to add new zones. Well, I mean, we don't have like new mechanics for zones yet, but um, I will make sure that it shows up after we finish the stream. Um, OK, I think this should all work. Um, let me just make sure all of these names match correctly. Two warm, two warm, two water cactus, water cactus. Great, OK. Oh, man, yeah. Oh, wow. So fast. Um, OK. Oh, I actually really enjoy watching the two worms come out. <laughs> Looks like they're like crawling up. Um, cool. Our garden. Uh, OK, I'm going to the last thing I'm going to do is to increase this time. Um, I think I'm going to set it in a variable and just make each um, stage the same time. I think you should do a, I think you should do a random range on the stage from like. Ooh, I like that. 500 to something that's like pretty big. Yeah. That is great. Always a fan of more randomness. Um, okay, so 500 is quite, quite small. So 2,000, two seconds? Yeah, and then you need to do it in the other place too. Yeah, I think I'm going to make, oh wait, what did I do here? Okay, so this is the seed, and then right here we're also setting it um, in both. So I think the seed will be 500, and then I'm going to up this a little bit. Probably not like noticeably, but it's fine. Or should it be the other way? Should the seed take longer? Let's take a look. All right. Nice. Yeah. These are satisfyingly different, I think. Oh, and I need to make the Z index of the player above everything. Set gardener. I 
think it needs to take way longer though, so that you enjoy the watching them grow experience. Two. Um. Yeah, that's fair. Um. Okay, so let me start with maybe we'll go from two seconds to five seconds for the seed. Come around. I feel like the seeds take longer. For everything else, two seconds is not even that long. All right, you guys watch this, and I will begin copying Daryl's. How was that? This is so cool. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's okay. Speed wise? All right. I think it's like hmm? I think it's also great that Richard and I have there's two different types of tube worm. And yeah. It makes it look like there's I think it looks yeah. really nice mixed together. All right, here's Daryl's. He did not label it. <laughs> um so we will also be discovering this creature. <laughs> yeah. There's there's a link in the chat to what image it is, but um, okay. I don't know. <laughs> don't need to do that necessarily. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like how Richard and Vivian made like opposite sounds. <laughs> well, this one looks cute. <laughs> Are the last two ones the same, or are they supposed no, to be? No, it's possible I copied something wrong. OK, I think, or, oh no, did I miss? No, OK, wait, one, two. Yeah, I think the last two in the chat are the same, if you have a different. Oh. Ah, there okay. we go. I think that one's different. This is so much cuter than the thing you posted in the chat, Daryl. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, know. Um, I, I okay. figured. Hmm? I figured I didn't want to make it too scary. Yeah. <laughs> and what is the name of this guy? Oh well, that is a good question. One, two, three. This is our four, which does not yet exist. And, oh right, I need to actually put this inside an else with a name. Water spider. <laughs> it's actually like a very gooey thing, but you should. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not finding a name. Is it not a jellyfish? It looks like a jellyfish. <laughs> it looks like it could be a jellyfish, yeah. Call it a jelly for now. Um, and we can come back for scientific accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. So stage four, we'll, we'll make a zone four, you know, sometime. Um, I'll do it off stream. Um, and stage four will be the, the jelly. Um, cool. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, I'm Shannon. I'm at Chacao on the Make Code forums. And I'm Daryl at Darzu on the Make Code forum. I'm Richard. <laughs> at Richard on the Make Code Forums, and I'm Vivian, at Lifter <laughs> on the Make Code Forums. <laughs> Tune in. Oh, we aren't streaming tomorrow, so Monday. Oh, Monday. yes. Yeah.